My name is Butch Stearns and I'd like to have a conversation with you today about the great content shift, the demand for content anytime and anywhere. Uh, joining me right now is Michael Boland. He is a mobile expert and analyst for BIA Kelsey. Michael, how are you today? Very good, how are you? Good, uh, let's talk about advertisers. So we've talked about the growth of mobile and how exponentially it just keeps going up and up and up. Talked about the ways consumers are going in to um, uh, retail outlets and using their mobile devices, their smartphones, not only to per uh, purchase, but to research what's going on. Again, all the numbers that you guys provide at BI Kelsey say that that trend continues to go up. Let's talk about it from the advertiser side now. You're an advertiser. Used to be the push mentality, I'll spend millions of dollars on a Super Bowl ad to reach millions of people. Now it's about reaching people where they are, and you better be there when it comes to mobile, right? Yeah, very good point. And um, you know, you mentioned the great content shift and all this usage that's very much shifting. Like a lot of other things, Madison Avenue is kind of a, a trailing indicator of kind of where these trends are going, where you see usage coming first and then um, advertisers following those eyeballs. And, and that's exactly what we're seeing right now in all forms of mobile marketing and mobile content delivery. And you know, what we're seeing a great deal of is advertisers in what I call kind of mobile advertising 1.0 um, are largely taking their um, you know, campaign objectives and creative and simply porting them over to a smaller screen. But we're now starting to see the next step in that evolution where they are building campaigns and creative and other kind of elements of these ad campaigns that um, are built from the ground up for mobile. Given that mobile usage, mobile form factor, all these things are, are very much different. There's a lot more opportunity to do things such as target someone by their exact location and other things like that. So we're really starting to see advertisers evolve in that sense and, and follow the usage again as that trend usually goes. So let me take it from a brand perspective and see if you agree with my point. Let's talk about a national brand versus a local brand. So say I got a local uh, soda pop company called Carl's Cola and years ago there was no way I could compete with Coca-Cola. I might go door to door in my neighborhood but nowadays, I would put it this way, I'd see if you agree, that if I'm the national brand, if I'm Coca-Cola, I have a challenge with Mobile Local to reach out to these people. And if I'm the local brand, I actually have an opportunity to compete with the national brand and the big boys, a different mm -hmm. opportunity on a different level nowadays. Do you agree? Yeah, that's a great point. And when you look at um, the, the opportunity for national brands, um, they, the way they normally think and a lot of other advertising they do is much more um, display oriented or, or branding. It's a branding medium as opposed to being what we call direct response. Um, so you're getting the word out there. The opportunity with mobile is to go all the way down the funnel to actually drive uh, conversions and sales. So it's not just getting people to know about Carl Soda, it's actually getting them to move off the shelf and being able to tell exactly how many they moved off the shelf uh, based on what campaigns and then iterate going forward uh, based on you know what was successful and what wasn't. And then to the second part of your point, yes, the small business advertiser as well, like we saw um, with kind of desktop online advertising, things like search over the last decade, um, it's really kind of come down market and almost become democratized um, where you know small business advertisers are invited to the table to kind of do things like bid on keywords uh, based on the granular level of targeting they want to do it either in their neighborhoods or the type of activities they want to drive, getting people into their stores, that type of thing. So yes, in both cases, large advertisers and small advertisers, uh, mobile will allow them or empower them to do a lot of stuff um, that they couldn't do before just based yeah, on their positioning. Even by specific partner or retail outlet, I mean, let's look at the Carl's Cola example. Mm -hmm. I could never afford an end cap like Coca-Cola could, but I don't need to now. There's different right. ways I can reach that customer. Yeah, there, it's not the um, kind of the, the reach-driven advertising that, that the large um, brand would go for. Um, you know, a, as a small advertiser, you of course don't have the capability or the resources to afford a large enough campaign. But you're right, you don't need a large enough campaign. You just won't need one that's targeted enough um, to get to the people that have, have access to your product that, you know, are in your neighborhood or are in your particular niche. If, you know, say it's not cola, say it's some kind of obscure vertical of, um, you know, adventure sports. Um, you know, just it, it depends on the type of segmentation, whether it be geographic or behavioral or interest-based. The point is that you can start to do that segmentation um, and not have to do this major blast kind of exposure campaign. Um, and, and that's very empowering for a small business. The great content shift is ongoing. The demand for content anywhere, any place, any time. And there are shifting technologies. There are shifts in expectations, what consumers want. There are shifting business strategies, the way you should think about it. 
and shift in players, the people you're going to deal business with. How can you think about all of this together and do business better in 2012? Be a part of the NAB show 2012, the week of April 16th in Las Vegas, Nevada. To find out more about it, go to nabshow.com.